Happy New Year, it's the beginning of the new year and I'm gonna randomly use this video to look back at some of the best jam this year. A lot of good and bad music dropped the past 12 months so I decided to give my top 10 albums that dropped during 2020. Yeah I know, so many people definitely wanted to know my opinion out of all people. Anyway, as I mainly listen to hip hop, this list will only include hip hop albums, so no Justin Bieber, After Hours by The Weeknd or any other kind of music that isn't close to rap. Also, keep in mind this is just my opinion and personal taste. If you disagree with some of the picks, that's okay too. You can show me what albums you would have chosen in the comments, so don't be afraid to object. And without further ado, let's get into the ranking. Coming in at number 10 for me is Kid Cudi's new album, Man on the Moon Free The Chosen. This album was of course highly anticipated by a lot of people I know and also just in general. Kid Cudi is one of those consistently popular rappers after all. I personally didn't listen to most of his stuff prior to this except his collaborative project Kid See Ghosts with Kanye West and his The Scott single with Travis Scott that dropped earlier this year. But I have to say that this album absolutely delivered for me. There was a lot of variety, Kid Cudi's signature humming, just a lot of great songs with high replay value on this thing. The Void or She Knows This for instance. Also the Pop Smoke feature on the track Show Out in my opinion did a lot for the album. Not just from the sales side of things cause Pop Smoke is really popular right now. But it was also just very interesting hearing a rapper like Kid Cudi on a drill beat. So yeah this was definitely in my top 10 albums this year. Number 9 in my opinion gotta be 21 Savages and Metro Booming's collaborative album Savage Mode 2. Obviously being the sequel to 2016's widely popular release Savage Mode. Just like the previous entry a highly highly anticipated album and I feel like it delivered. Great production work by Metro Booming, I mean not like I could produce anything other than background music from my school theater so who am I to judge anything but just from my personal taste it seemed really well crafted. And 21 Savage's unique signature style of rapping made this a very enjoyable project. Features from Drake and Young Fuck were also a great addition to the respective songs they were part of. It was getting somewhat repetitive with the last three songs, but there were so many good songs on there that I have to count it as one of my favorites this year. For me number 8 goes to Beautiful Havoc from Snot. In my ass Beautiful Havoc has to be one of the most underrated albums of the year. I used to think this guy was somewhat of a one hit wonder, but this project definitely proved me wrong. This is straight fire, I don't think there's a single track on here that I dislike. In contrast I have like half of the album on my playlist. Still not every song is the same, there's a lot of more depressing songs on it but also some uplifting songs. With some nice flexing culture thrown on top of it, like on the tracks Mean featuring Flo Millie, a surprisingly decent female rapper, Tony Braxton or Like Me featuring Ian Dior. Which was a great feature by the way, these two have very similar voices and style of rapping. Some songs are even kinda between the two styles like who do I trust but overall nothing I could even complain about. This entire thing just got massively overshadowed since it released on the same day as Trippy Red's Pegasus and King Wan's Welcome to O Block. Which is a shame cause I believe it's one of the best releases this year and really threw snot onto the radar for me. My entry for number 7 has to be Logic's final album No Pressure. I have to admit this one really really surprised me and also somewhat grew on me as well. I went into this one not expecting too much because while I definitely enjoyed Logic's early mixtapes and albums and I could still somewhat enjoy his music until Bobby Tarantino 2, afterwards not so much anymore. Especially Supermarket and Confessions of a Dangerous Mind kinda killed my personal view of Logic and his evolution. And I don't think I'm the only one that didn't have the highest of expectations going into this but this album definitely redeemed Logic and was a respectful way to go out. This really gave off a similar vibe to his early work like Under Pressure and The Incredible True Story. Definitely an improvement with the lyrics especially other than the most relaxing songs. It also featured the short banger Perfect. This album really changed my perception of logic again and I'm even a regular at his twitch streams now. So yeah deserving placement in the top 10. In my opinion the 6th best album of the year is Benny the Butcher's Burden of Proof. This album is criminally underrated man. 
As someone that definitely listens to more melodic rap, I normally wouldn't have even listened to this thing. It's closer to old school hip hop, but it does a great job at making it incredibly entertaining listening to it. On this record, Benny the Butcher talks about his past and making it in the music industry. There's a lot of great songs on there, for example Timeless with Lil Wayne and Big Sean featured on it, or his solo track Famous. So this one definitely surprised me as well, and I think even though it's not the style of rap I usually enjoy most, this one was so well made that it's a deserving number 6. My number 5 spot goes to Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon by the late Pop Smoke. One of three posthumous albums featured on this list. I have a lot of respect for Pop Smoke. If you really think about it, his career was incredibly short, but he managed to accomplish so much despite only having so little time in the game. This guy was like 3 years older than me but made music with a story behind it and I come to respect that. So after coming out with an enjoyable album Meteoru 2 and following his unfortunate death earlier this year, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, the phrase that was shouted at the beginning of Meteoru 2 released. It has tons of bangers on it, great production work and a decent album cover considering what it was originally supposed to be. It's full of his iconic ad-libs and yeah, a very solid posthumous release. Coming in at number 4 is Jack Harlow's That's What They All Say. This one was just a straight vibe to me. Jack Harlow really stepped up his game this year by a lot. Following the release of his hit single What's Popping and the remix of that, this project varies from fast paced bangers like Taylor Hero to more chill and relaxed songs like 21C Delta or Keep It Light and I really enjoy both kinds of his music on there. Great features on this thing as well, Lil Baby, Big Sean, the guy from Maroon 5 all fit perfectly on their respected track. So yeah, Jack Harlow proved he was here to stay. Before we go on to the top 3, don't forget to leave a like and sub if you haven't done that already. And make sure you tell me in the comments how wrong my opinion is and share your favorite albums this year. My third best album of the year was The Goat by Polo G. This one is just loaded with some extremely hot songs man. Polo G currently is one of the best rappers out there in my opinion. And this album just proves that as fact. It features some great songs that mainly focus on the delivery and hook and not so much on the lyrics like Go Stupid which I consider to be a flawless hit but there were also some more lyrically focused songs which I really liked as well like 21, Martin and Gina or 33. Also it had a Juice Wall feature on it, always a big plus in my eyes. So yeah definitely my top 3 albums of this year. Second place goes to Circles from Mac Miller. The second posthumous album on this list and this is just hit home for me. I remember first listening to this when it came out after coming home at like midnight just turning this new album up in the middle of the night and yeah. What's to say, it really hit me man. This was an overall great project and perfect send off from Mac Miller who we sadly lost way too soon. And yeah, I know that this album is very far off from classical hip hop but Mac Miller still was a rapper at heart and that's why I'm counting this as my second best album of the year even though it's probably classified as something different than rap. Okay, before we get to the top spot, I just wanna bring out some honorable mentions, some albums I really really enjoyed this year and just didn't quite make my top 10 list. The previously mentioned Meet the Woo 2 release from Pop Smoke, Internet Money's collaborative project Before the Storm, Lil Lota's Crip Tape, Big Sean's Detroit 2, I think I only listened to this because of the whole war with 6 9 but this was also just a very well crafted album, Lil Uzi Vert's Eternal Attack, it was a long wait for it, but I definitely enjoyed it as well. King Vaughn's Welcome to O Block also was filled with a lot of great songs, RIP to King Vaughn Man, and MGK's Tickets to My Downfall. Even though it isn't necessarily a rap album, it goes more into a rock direction, MGK is still somewhat a rapper, even though he's starting to reinvent himself, so I'm counting it. And my number one spot is... Juice WRLD's Legends Never Die. Yeah, this was always gonna be my number one. Long live Juice WRLD, man. I'm so relieved that this album was handled the right way by the label. After Skins and Bad Wives Forever by X, I feared that they might fuck up this release as well. But no, it, it felt like something Juice WRLD would actually release. Maybe I'm just a massive Juice WRLD fanboy, but I used to only listen to him for like 2018 and 2019. And when he sadly passed away, I was at first pretty hesitant to even listen to his posthumous music but quality is still there. A lot of the songs are probably almost finished before he passed away to be fair but this still stands as the best album this year for me. 
Just so many good songs, man. Fighting Demons, Bad Energy, Stay High, Hate the Other Side, Life's a Mess, Man of the Year, etc, etc, etc. Just an overall really stacked album from someone who I consider to be one of the most lyrically gifted musicians of all time. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Like I said, if you feel different about any of my picks, that's okay. You can show me in the comments which picks you would have chosen differently. And, and yeah, we'll see each other next video.